ever wondered why creatine is a staple supplement in the fitness world? Today, we're taking a deep dive into the history of creatine, its effects on muscle growth and strength, and the difference between non-responders and high responders. Stay with us as we delve into the science behind creatine. Let's travel back in time and understand how creatine became a popular supplement. Picture this, the year is 1832, and a French scientist named Michel Eugène Chevreul has just discovered a new component in skeletal muscle. He named it creatine, after the Greek word for meat, creus. Chevreul's discovery sparked off a series of scientific studies over the next two centuries, leading us to the understanding we have today of this powerful supplement. Fast forward to the early 20th century. Scientists began to understand that creatine played a critical role in energy production at a cellular level. Our bodies naturally produce creatine in the liver, kidneys, and pancreas, and it's also found in foods like red meat and fish. But the amount we naturally produce and consume is quite small, which is where creatine supplementation comes in. You see, creatine is stored in our muscles as phosphocreatine. During high-intensity exercise, phosphocreatine is converted into adenosine triphosphate, or ATP, which is often referred to as the body's energy currency. This conversion process helps to provide a quick burst of energy, which is particularly useful during weightlifting or sprinting. By supplementing with creatine, we can increase the amount of phosphocreatine in our muscles, and thus, the amount of available ATP. This means, we can work out harder and for longer, leading to increased muscle growth and strength over time. Creatine's rise to popularity in the fitness industry began in the 90s, following several high-profile studies that showed its benefits on athletic performance. Today, it's one of the most widely researched and used supplements in the world, with countless studies supporting its safety and effectiveness. What's fascinating is that despite its widespread use, there's still so much to learn about creatine. Researchers continue to explore its potential benefits and its effects on various aspects of health and fitness. So, we see how creatine made its way into the fitness world, but how does it affect muscle growth? Let's explore. Now, let's understand how creatine impacts muscle growth. Creatine, a naturally occurring compound in our bodies, plays a pivotal role in fueling our muscles. It's like a high-octane fuel for our muscle cells, providing them with the energy they need to contract and expand during workouts. But how does this relate to muscle growth? Well, when we exercise, our muscles undergo microscopic damage, which triggers the body's repair mechanisms. This process is known as muscle protein synthesis. In simple terms, it's the body's way of repairing and building bigger muscles. Creatine comes into play by boosting this process. Research has shown that creatine supplementation can increase the rate of muscle protein synthesis. A study published in the Journal of Applied Physiology found that individuals who supplemented with creatine experienced a significant increase in muscle fiber size and overall muscle mass compared to those who didn't. But that's not all. Creatine also draws water into the muscle cells, causing them to swell. This swelling stimulates protein synthesis while also reducing protein breakdown. It's a two-pronged approach to muscle growth. In other words, creatine not only helps build new muscle but also protects existing muscle from being broken down. Moreover, creatine increases the levels of an insulin-like growth factor in muscles, which is a key player in muscle development. This growth factor works to repair and build new muscle tissue, further enhancing the effects of creatine on muscle growth. However, it's important to note that while creatine can enhance muscle growth, it's not a magic pill. It works best in combination with regular strength training and a protein-rich diet. Now you may be wondering, what about the long-term effects? Well, research suggests that long-term creatine use is safe and can lead to sustained muscle growth. A study in the Journal of Strength and Conditioning Research found that individuals who used creatine for up to two years experienced continued muscle growth. While creatine aids muscle growth for many, not everyone responds the same way. Let's find out why. Ever wondered why some people see massive gains with creatine while others don't? Well, this is where the concepts of non-responders and high responders come into play. Imagine a continuum. On one end, we have the high responders, those individuals who supplement with creatine and see noticeable improvements in their muscle growth and strength. These are the folks whose bodies react positively to the addition of creatine harnessing its power to fuel their workouts and help them achieve their fitness goals. On the other end of the continuum, we have the non-responders. These are the individuals who, despite taking the same amount of creatine, do not see the same level of results. 
It's not that they're doing anything wrong or that the creatine isn't working, it's just that their bodies respond differently. So, what factors contribute to these different responses? Well, genetics is a big one. Just like how some people can eat whatever they want without gaining a pound, while others have to meticulously count calories to maintain their weight, some people are naturally more responsive to creatine than others. Diet also plays a significant role. Creatine can be found in various food sources like beef, chicken, and fish. So if you're already consuming a lot of these foods, your body might already be saturated with creatine, which could render supplementation less effective. But it's important to remember that everyone is unique. Just because you might identify as a non-responder, doesn't mean you should write off creatine entirely. It could be that you need to adjust your dosage, or perhaps incorporate it at different times in your workout regime. And let's not forget that while creatine can certainly aid in muscle growth, it's just one piece of the puzzle. A balanced diet, regular exercise, and adequate rest are equally, if not more, important when it comes to achieving your fitness goals. So, we've seen creatine's impact on muscle growth, but what about strength? Let's find out. Strength gains are a major goal for many. So how does creatine come into play? Well, creatine is like a secret weapon for your strength training. It works primarily by increasing your muscles' phosphocreatine stores. These stores are used to produce more of the high-energy molecule ATP, which is often referred to as the body's energy currency. When you have more ATP, your body can perform better during exercise, including lifting heavier weights. Now let's get into the science of it. Numerous studies have shown creatine's positive effects on strength. For instance, a research review published in the Journal of Strength and Conditioning Research analyzed 22 studies and found that, on average, creatine supplementation increased strength by 8% more than placebo. Moreover, it enhanced the subject's maximal power and performance by 14%. In another study, subjects who supplemented with creatine while following a six-week weightlifting program increased their bench press strength by an extra 6 kilograms compared to those who only followed the program. That's a significant difference. Creatine's effectiveness in strength enhancement is not just limited to weightlifting. It's also beneficial for high-intensity sports like sprinting and soccer, where quick bursts of effort are required. In conclusion, creatine is a proven ally for anyone looking to increase their strength, whether you're a weightlifter, an athlete, or just someone aiming for personal fitness goals. Creatine has some other interesting aspects too, let's discover. Creatine is not just about muscle and strength, it has some other intriguing facts too. Firstly, did you know that creatine has a positive impact on brain health? Indeed, creatine isn't solely for muscle heads. It plays a crucial role in brain energy metabolism. Studies suggest that it may help improve cognitive functioning and potentially enhance memory and intelligence. It's also being explored for its potential to aid in conditions like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. Now let's address the elephant in the room. Hair loss. Some of you might have come across studies that link creatine to hair thinning. While it's true that a small-scale study found a potential correlation, no definitive evidence exists to broadly assert that creatine causes hair loss. As always, more research is needed before we jump to conclusions. Next up, let's talk about creatine monohydrate versus other creatine forms. Creatine monohydrate is the most researched form, and it's proven to be both safe and effective. Other forms like creatine ethyl ester or buffered creatine might sound fancy, but they don't necessarily offer additional benefits. In fact, some may even be less effective, so when in doubt, creatine monohydrate is a solid choice. Finally, let's delve into creatine dosing and timing. There's a popular belief that you need to load creatine by taking larger doses initially. While this can saturate your muscles with creatine faster, it's not necessary. A consistent daily dose of 3 to 5 grams is enough to maximize your creatine stores over time. As for timing, it's less critical. You can take creatine pre- or post-workout, or even on rest days. The key is consistency. Let's summarize what we've learned today about the science behind creatine. We've covered a lot of ground today on creatine. We've discussed its effects on the body, muscle growth, strength, and the varying responses. Also, we've shed light on other useful creatine information. Remember, every body is unique, so the effects of creatine can vary. Always consult with a healthcare professional before starting any new supplement regimen. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more informative content.